Brought to you by GatewayCitySavers.com. Softly Scouting Report, hosted by Cliff Saunders, exclusively on 101ESPN.com. Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome on in to the Softly Scouting Report right here on 101ESPN.com. They're calling it the brawl for it all, the battle for the NFC West title. It's Sunday night at 7.20, the Rams and the Seahawks. Tony Softly, our 101 ESPN NFL analyst. I'm Cliff Saunders. Let's go right into the game, the big one. When we get going on Sunday night, who is going to be the quarterback for Seattle? It's either going to be Matt Hasselbeck or Charlie Whitehurst. Well, you're right, Cliff. It's one of the two, uh, but I really think it's going to be Matt Hasselbeck. I think this guy is going to live and die to get back. He's, he's doing everything he can treatment-wise in order to get on the field. He doesn't want to miss this playoff game. He doesn't want to miss a chance to, to win the NFC crown. He wants to be at the helm of that. Uh, if he does go and he can't finish, then you'll see Charlie Whitehurst, you know, and that'll be a different situation. All right, Hasselback at 35 is a lot different than he was five years ago. What is the biggest difference you notice in Hasselback? Well, really, he's uh, he's an age quarterback, okay? He's uh, in the transitional mode. Uh, you know, he's got a heart of a champion. He fights, uh, but you know what? He's, he's a veteran, and you can see the legs starting to slow down. You can see the arm strength starting to slow down a little bit, and he thinks he can squeeze it in the window when he really can't now. Uh, his mind is telling him he can, and his body's telling him, I can't deliver anymore. And you can kind of see that right now in his play in the last couple of games. What about Charlie Whitehurst? What does he bring to the table other than NFL bloodlines when his dad used to play for the Green Bay Packers? Well, you know, I'm not really high on Charlie Whitehurst. I wasn't high on him coming out of Clemson. I don't think he's an elite quarterback in the National Football League. I think he's probably a, a number two or number three on a team, to be really honest with you, Cliff. And, and uh, when I look at him and I watch him play, I don't see uh, the command of the offense. I don't see the leadership qualities that you need. Uh, uh, t in order to uh, to run a football team and, and I don't see the players responding to Charlie Whitehurst and definitely when he comes in the fan base if he doesn't do something positive right off the bat the 12th man is starting to boom and you'd hardly ever hear that out there all right let's talk a little bit about Quest Field and that crowd Seattle is where you're from you know that area very very well how confident are you that the Rams are going to be able to deal with a rowdy crowd in Seattle when they had trouble at home against Kansas City with 5,000 Chiefs fans in the audience? Well, you know what, Cliff? I think what they have to do really is they have to stay within the offense. They have to do what they do best. Uh, you know, that short intermediate passing game, uh, handing off to Steven Jackson. Sam Bradford's got to take control of the ball. He's got to be smart with the ball in space and, and make very good decisions. And I think, too, they, I think you'll see some no-huddle offense despite the 12th man. I think the communicative skills the last couple of weeks have been very good running the no-huddle. And uh, they'll take control of the crowd by putting points on the board. You put points on the board, it'll shut those people up. And I think that's what they're going to have to do. Seattle's defense seems to be equal opportunity. They struggle against the run. They struggle against the past you're calling plays you're game planning what are you going to emphasize this no week? i'm going to emphasize the run cliff there's no question i'm going to run the ball set it up with stephen jackson and then it'll it'll blossom like a beautiful flower for sam bradford to deliver that pass to damian andola you know the tight ends underneath with gibson and robinson but look for Denario Alexander to eat this defense up because they don't have anybody that can go deep on that, and the safeties have a hard time on range. So look for him also to have a big game as well. What do you see as the biggest difference in the Rams between the first showdown of the season with Seattle and the one that's coming up on Sunday night? Well, the biggest thing for me is defense. I think it's the takeaways uh, that, you know, the blitz packages, the total pressure, and also Sam Bradford. Let's talk about the offense. I think Sam Bradford is the most valuable uh, player on this team. I think he's the offensive rookie of the year, and he's the most valuable player in the NFC West and no doubt he's the best quarterback in the NFC so I think a, a conglomerate of everything it's really a team effort both offense defense you look at Amendola doing his thing on return so I think it's a team package and I think that's the difference in October. All right Tony if the Rams are gonna win on Sunday night at Quest Field it will be because team effort just like I was talking about it's got to be offense defense and special teams it's got to be a complete package the uh, the offensive coordinator uh, Pat Shermer and defensive coordinator and Ken Flagel those guys have to dial up a very good game plan and don't go outside the realm don't go outside of your comfort zone what you haven't been doing don't get cute stay with your plan stay with what's in you and you guys will deliver this championship he's Tony Softley and he will join Randy Carricker and Rick Venturi for the Arby's pregame show at four o'clock on Sunday at 720 the call with Steve Savart and DeMarco go far. I'll have post game with Jim Hannafin until 1 a.m. Tony will join us. Late night with Hanny ought to be very interesting. This has been the Softly Scouting Report. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy you New are year. watching 101ESPN.com.